Hello. In the last video, we used the definition of a derivative to find the derivative of the function sine of x. In this video, I thought what we would do is use that very same derivative definition to find the derivative of a function f of x is equal to cosine of x instead. There we go. And just like in the last video, the one trick that we'll be using to evaluate this is this limit here that the limit of sine of x over x, most commonly written just as, a, like if you're actually, you know, using notation, just as lim, the uh, limit of sine of x over x as x goes to zero is equal to one. Uh, this is a law or theorem or just a good limit to know. Uh, it can be proved using uh, calculus later on, but for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna get into that. That's just a given. So the definition of the derivative is that f prime of x, the derivative is equal to, f, uh, is equal to, I almost did it again, the limit as delta x goes to zero, also sometimes called h, it doesn't really matter, of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. All right, so let's start plugging things in, right? So hence, uh, f prime of x, or our function cosine of x, is going to be the limit as delta x goes to zero of cosine of x plus delta x minus cosine of x over delta x. And this isn't quite done. Notice if we just make delta x is equal to zero, then you'll find we have zero over zero, which is indeterminate. So that's not an answer that we can have. All right, what's another step we can take? Well we can separate out this term here using what we know about the angle addition identities from trigonometry. I'm not going to write that down here, but uh, either you should probably, you should know these identities. If not, you should review the videos, or at least you should understand what I did to get what I got. So f prime of x is going to be the limit as delta x goes to zero of cosine of x times the cosine of delta x minus the sine of x times the sine of delta x minus the cosine of x, right? That cosine of x comes down from here. And then we're dividing by delta x. Divide by delta x. Okay, so I'm going to start just moving things around. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, manipulate our function here. I'm going to turn this into the limit as delta x goes to zero of cosine of x times cosine of delta x minus one minus sine x sine delta x. Hopefully you see what I did there. All I did was move this term over here, divide both and multiply by cosine of x. So we have cosine of x. You'll notice if we distribute that out, we get all of our terms. And of course this is divided by delta x. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is separate this out into two limits. You'll know from the limit rules that this is a thing that we can do. This is going to be the same as the limit as delta x goes to zero of cosine of x times cosine of delta x minus one divided by delta x minus the limit as delta x goes to zero of sine x sine delta x divided by delta x. Okay, and at this stage, well, I mean, we can do a little bit more here. Uh, 
let's see. What I'm going to do at this time is how about if the limit on the left, we multiply the top and bottom, or if, well, let's just multiply by negative 1 twice. So this is going to be the limit as delta x goes to 0 of negative cosine of x times the negative of this one. You, you know, we're multiplying by negative 1 times negative 1, so, you know, we're not changing anything. We're just changing things around a little bit in terms of how they look. But when we multiply by a negative 1 in here, we're going to get 1 minus cosine of delta x. Okay. And that seems all fine. You'll notice if we distribute out that negative on the front, we get what we had before. And we divide by delta x. And then we subtract the limit. Subtract the limit. Come on. As delta x goes to 0 of sine x sine delta x divided by delta x. Okay. So now I'm going to have to erase some of what we've done. So hopefully if you are writing things down, you uh, have that down. Or uh, if you're just viewing for the sake of math and you're remembering this stuff, then good for you. But I'm, I'm going to have to erase this so that we can, uh, in fact, I'm going to erase all of this. I'm just going to leave that part at the bottom that we just got because I'm going to need a lot more space. So let's keep going with it. So this is going to be equal to, I'm going to switch to purple. This is going to be, what can we do here? Uh, well, on for the left one, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus cosine of delta x. So what's that going to look like? That's going to be limit as delta x goes to 0 of negative cosine of x times 1 minus cosine of delta x times 1 plus cosine delta x divided by delta x times 1 plus cosine delta x. And then I haven't changed anything on the left side. We're just leaving that for now how it is. The limit as delta x goes to 0 of sine x times sine delta x over delta x. Whatever. So you'll know from algebra that when we take 1 minus something times 1 plus something, that's the same as taking that first one uh, squared minus the second one squared. So this is going to turn out to be, and hopefully you can recognize this, the limit as delta x goes to 0 of negative cosine of x times 1 minus cosine squared of delta x divided by delta x times 1 plus cosine of delta x. And maybe this is starting to get a little bit clear, but not quite yet. You know, where exactly are we going with this? If you saw the last video, you probably know. And in fact, what I'm going to do to make things perhaps even a little clearer is separate out this second limit into sine of delta x over delta x times the sine of x. Okay, so what can we do now? Well, you probably know from trigonometry that this here is just sine squared of delta x. That's a Pythagorean identity. So what we can do is we can just, well, plug that in. Sine squared of delta x. This is going to be the limit as delta x goes to 0 of negative cosine of x times the sine squared of delta x divided by delta x times 1 plus cosine of delta x minus the limit as delta x goes to 0 of sine delta x divided by delta x times sine of x. So there's still some things that we can do. I'm going to just rearrange things a little bit. This is the limit as delta x goes to 0 of sine of delta x over delta x times 
negative cosine of x sine of delta x divided by 1 plus cosine of delta x. And this might seem more complicated than it was before, but I promise that this is actually going to be quite a bit simpler. And then we're subtracting the limit as delta x goes to 0 of sine delta x over delta x times the sine of x. And now we're going to use another limit property. And this is something that's going to really set this apart now. What we're going to say is that because, look, we're just multiplying these two things by each other, the limit of these two things multiplied, right, like this one and this one and this one and this one, is just going to be the separate limits of the two multiplied as long as we can evaluate both. And trust me, we can. So now we have this is going to be equal to the limit as delta x goes to 0 of sine delta x over delta x, and that, that's probably starting to look a little bit familiar, times the limit uh, as delta x goes to 0 of negative cosine of x sine of delta x divided by 1 plus cosine of delta x. And then we're subtracting the limit as delta x goes to 0 of sine of x divided by, I'm sorry, sine of delta x divided by delta x times the limit as delta x goes to 0 of sine of x. All right, and we're almost done. Hopefully, you, you see what I've done because if you remember, at the very top of the screen, we set out that one trick that we'd be using. And now we have everything set up to use that trick. So I'm going to erase this just so that we can finish up. And I kind of in blue and orange, I have like the key stages, the key moments where we, we really started to get in the motion of actually solving for what the derivative is only using our, uh, our uh, form of the derivative, the definition. So now, finally, what we're going to say is this is equal to, well, what's this? This is just equal to 1. And what's this? This is just equal to 1. So we can just ignore those. We can just ignore those. They're just coefficients of 1. So what is this here? Let's, let's write that up here. The limit as delta x goes to 0 of negative cosine of x sine of delta x divided by 1 plus cosine of delta x. And now what's this? Limit as delta x goes to 0 of sine of x. Well, delta x doesn't have anything to do with that formula. So we're just subtracting sine of x, right? As delta x goes to 0, sine of x is still sine of x. The delta x has nothing to do with the x, right? If there's no delta x in there, then there's nothing to do. You know, So we're just subtracting sine of x. And this is separate from the limit. So, you know, we're taking the limit of this and then subtracting sine of x. So what's the limit here? Look, if you just plug delta x in, sine of 0 is 0, right? This is just going to be 0. So this whole thing is just going to cancel out because, look, if you look on the bottom, cosine of delta x, when delta x is equal to 0, is 1. So if we have 0 over 2, well, this whole thing is just going to be 0. So our final answer is negative sine of x. So given, now let's go back, let's go back to the very beginning, given f of x is equal to cosine of x, then f prime of x, the derivative, is going to be equal to negative sine of x. And you probably know that from our useful derivatives video, but now I've sort of proven it using the definition of a derivative and some tricks that perhaps we'll prove later on. I hope that this was insightful, and thanks for watching.